Welcome to episode five of Off the Rails. I am Gems, and with me is Tone. How are you today, Tone? What's up? How's it going? Oh, good. Nice, nice, simple, stress-free evening for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. I can. I, uh, I, I feel you on that one. Uh, so we are recording this a uh, couple days before Thanksgiving. Um, we did our first our first interview today it yep. went super well as most people have seen probably by now because they are super fans of the show so they've watched episode four with chainsaw Lennon. um uh how were you was that your first interview as a host gems yes you've been with me for every podcast I've pretty much ever done so yes that was i did a couple with the anomalies but it wasn't like i was interviewing like i think technically interviewed British will a little bit. I just asked, you know, when, but that was with six other dudes on early anomalies. I don't even know if it was named anomalies yet when we had uh, mm -hmm. British will on. I want to think it was the old version, but like, I mean, they talked to him and then they're like, Oh, gems, you have any questions? And I was like, what the fuck is uh, blood uh, crap? I can't even think of the name of it. Some uh, blood. Yeah, it's a food. It's a weird food the Brits eat. Blood. Blood. God damn it. Diamonds. Blood. Diamonds. No, that's what keeps coming to my head. <laughs> Bloody bangers mash. I don't know it's that. not. Yeah, great story. I can't even think of the name of it. <laughs> you keep talking and telling me the story, and I'm going to look it up. It's and I mean, I just, I just did what I do and asked dumb questions, and they were talking about... Uh, I love how I put blood in, and the first thing that comes up is blood diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about how, like, uh, British bacon just hits better. It's different than here. And I was like, that's because it's made out of dragon. <laughs> and that was, like, the only two questions I asked him. I mean, that's... Blood pudding. Uh, I think blood, it's blood pudding. It's called black pudding. Yeah. But it's also yeah. might have something. But I put blood. I, this is what I googled: blood food, British food, and it came up with black pudding. I bet it's also, black pudding. Also known, also known as blood pudding. So, okay, yeah. good. I'm not as stupid as I was thinking I was. Nope. But it's made with pork blood, pork fat, beef, something, and cereal, usually oatmeal. That sounds <laughs> god awful, bro. Not. Yeah, I love pudding, but that's probably not a flavor I'm choosing. Bro, that sounds. Terrible. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> this, this this needs to be like a phone a friend and like we zoom, zoom will in right now. Like, like dude, what's going on? <laughs> no, see that's the crazy thing. So like, um, eating foods. What's uh? So we'll just go. We'll just go to crazy foods because that's a good way to go. I like to eat food. You like to eat food. Uh, after Thanksgiving, I'm gonna go on a diet, so I won't be able to eat. Me food. too. I um. <laughs> I stepped on the scale and I was like, Whoa, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Yeah, I bet you I weigh more than you, though. I don't know. How much do you think I weigh? Wait, wait, wait. I don't. So we've never met in person. We're right. Just, we're just brothers on the internet. Um, right. uh, how tall are you? 5'10. Okay, so I'm six foot. Okay. So I still probably weigh more than you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, but people call me, I'm like a small guy at work. They're like, oh, you're not very big. I was like, I must be dense or something. <laughs> you're like a dense matter in you. I guess. Uh, uh, are you in the 200s? Yes. Okay, so I am too. Uh, this is like a fucking, what is that game where you like play like the over under thing? Uh, are, I think if I, the Price is Right game similar to that. Hey, oh yeah, yeah. If I was betting, I would bet under 225 would i be correct uh yeah okay so then i weigh more than you I'm okay i weighed myself yesterday for the first time in a while yeah and it's the highest number i've ever seen on there it was 224 okay i'm 227 so perfect this is gonna be like a, a pod <laughs> uh biggest loser thing it doesn't even have to be a competition <laughs> and it just has to let me get down to under 200 again Dude, okay. Hey, we can hold each other accountable. <laughs> We're going to have to because I love snacks. I love... Yeah, I do too. What's your favorite snack? I just snack? like bored eat. What's your favorite go-to snack though? My favorite what? Go-to snack. Cookies or ice cream. If See, either I'm one is candy. I mean... Oh, like, 
like candy. If you're if you're gonna if you're gonna go with candy, are you a sweet or a like chocolate guy? Uh, if I, did you say am I a sweet or a chocolate guy? You like, don't consider like, chocolate a sweet? Like I mean, like uh, like when I say sweet, I mean like, like air airhead Skittle Starburst, like that kind of thing. Uh, most of the time I would prefer the chocolate, but I do like a good airhead or a good gummy bear. I definitely should have said fruity or something like that, but yeah, I probably. But I I'm would say, nah, it's okay. <laughs> so am I. Uh, if I was going to choose a favorite candy. All right, fuck it. Actually, no, we're not even candy doing draft? that. Nope, nope. Candy draft right now. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> On the fly, candy draft. All right. Uh, imaginary uh, imaginary heads or tails. I already thought of what I know it's going to be in, the he- in my head. I'm flipping it. Call it. Heads. It was heads. So you get to pick. Do you want the first pick or the second pick? Give me the first pick. Okay, first pick's yours. We're doing how many are we doing? Five? That's fine. Candy draft five? Okay, we're taking top five. Paper or anything with me. I, I, got, I got some. I always have paper near. Okay. Right. I had some and then I picked stuff up out here. Oh, I got you. Boom, boom, boom. So first first pick goes to you. And then I get the second and third pick and then to wrap it back. All right. Reese's peanut butter cups. Reese's peanut butter cups. All right. That's a solid choice. This is one of the chocolates that I do love. I do love me some Reese's peanut butter cups. All right, so, hmm. Ooh, this is my fit. See, all of my all of my favorite favorite candies. No way you would pick them because they're all like very obscure. Um, but um, we're just gonna gonna post a graphic and people can vote on which one they think who did better. I'm gonna gonna do the major ones just because no one's no one pick them. But like my favorite candy all time is uh, it's called uh, Crybaby Tears. It's like that crybaby gum, super sour, but they they're made into tear shapes and they're like a sweet tart almost, like consistency. That was my favorite part about Warheads was after you got the sour part out. Yeah. By the way, Warheads on my pick, but I won't um, pick them. They, they're, 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 I don't know if they're mainstream enough. So I'm, if I'm a, I'm gonna go mainstream candies. I'm gonna go my favorite mainstream candy if I'm buying it is probably gonna be uh, Haribo Golden Bear gummy bears. So. Do you, do you fuck with the Haribo gummy bears? Yeah, but we also live really close to the Albanese candy factory. I don't know gotcha. if you're familiar with Albanese, but like, mm. I don't know. They're locally, but like, they're also, I know they're at least statewide. They're probably in the Yeah. I, I, I'm a, I'm a snob. I'm a gummy bear snob though. I like the Haribo ones because they're a little bit hard. Yeah. And they're, and they're not, if they take, if, if gummy bears are like um, fruit snacks, I don't like them. Really? Like if they're that like really easy to chew through kind, I they I they bums me out. There's a lot uh, of foods I prefer slightly stale. Like, yeah, you know, me too. If, I, if I'm eating cake or something, and like the frosting is a little bit harder, I like it when it crunches a little bit. Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm with you. We are. I think we're weirdos, but uh, I'm <laughs> with you. Um, so I got gummy bears. I want. Uh, I'll just go with it because it's like one of the few chocolate ones that I like. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Snickers. I'm taking Snickers. That's a good one. So you have the four and five pick, sir. Butterfinger, but I want the previous Butterfinger. They updated the recipe in the last year or two, and I don't okay. like it as much. So like, Butter. if you give me like 2017 Butterfinger and before that, it was fantastic. I don't know why you fuck with a good thing. It made me so mad. Like, Dude, I get mad. I get mad when people get rid of. I I'm the king of like people. Like I I like things that get canceled. Not like like food wise. Like always. It's like like very real question. I'm about to derail our draft. But why the fuck doesn't KFC have chicken nuggets? That's a good point. They're the only fucking restaurant that doesn't have chicken nuggets. And they have chicken in their goddamn name. Do they have popcorn chicken? Yeah, they do. But those aren't chicken nuggets. Right. No. I. <laughs> That's a good question. By the way, they used to have chicken nuggets, and the reason I asked that is because I love their fucking chicken nuggets. Huh. By the way, their, their chicken nuggets are actually like just Wendy's chicken nuggets, but... Hey. Because Dave Thomas actually, I think, apprenticed under Colonel Sanders. Well, they kind of looked similar, right? I maybe. I, they might, I thought they did. I don't know. I think they were just old white-haired dudes, so... Old white-haired white dudes. Old white-haired white dudes. Um... 
Yeah, so I just derailed a draft, but you just took Butterfingers, old Butterfingers. Yeah, I'm just, I, I hate it. I have probably eaten like two Butterfingers since then when I used to get one on the way to work every night. So yeah, like, you know, you know when they fucked up, they, they made those peanut butter, they made, uh, not peanut butter, they made all oh, Butterfingers something else. BBs? No, those they made, those, those were great. They made, around 2017, they made another Butterfinger thing. And I don't know what it was called, but that I think that's when they switched it. It might be. Is it the one with like the wafers and stuff? It's like the butter. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Reese's has a bunch of different variations too, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Reese's does too. But Butterfingers, huh? that's not bad. I'll take it. Uh, Then I my next one, I will go. I My favorite candy bar growing up was Three Musketeers, so I think I'm going to go with that. Love me a Three Musketeers. I don't know how they make the chocolate so fluffy on the inside, but I'm all for it. Wasn't it nougat? Three Musketeers? It's like it's like cloud chocolate on the inside. I think it's nougat, bro. I thought nougat was in the Butterfingers. I thought that was the hard stuff. No. <laughs> no. Nougat's the stuff that's like on the bottom of the uh, Snickers bar. It's like Snickers caramel. It's like nougat caramel. and uh, Yeah, I thought nougat was harder. No, it is. I think it's like fluffy nougat, though. Is it? I don't know. One of us is going to be really fucking disappointed that we're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Three Musketeers is a candy bar. Blah, blah, blah. It is candy bar consisting of a chocolate covered fluffy whipped mousse. So then you're right. I think I was wrong. The virtually identical to the global Milky Way bar. And similar to the American version. I, I definitely thought it was nougat. <laughs> it's a moose. It's a chocolate, I had no fucking clue. Moose? I would have never thought to call it moose, but that's a perfect yes, that is, Yeah, that. that is actually pretty. Dude, three dude, three musketeers should probably really branch out, though. Like, if you think about it. Three musketeers should take that fluffy fucking moose that's inside and like put like white chocolate around it and shit. White, if I'm choosing a chocolate, white chocolate's my favorite chocolate. White chocolate macadamia. And that's my favorite cookie. Um, all right. So three musketeers. That's a legit one. By the way, I listened to the JJ Reddick draft um, where they did Halloween candy with Brad. I think it was not Bradley Beal. Maybe it was Bradley Beal. I don't know. But uh, he, he called both three musketeers and Butterfinger trash, I believe. So JJ Reddick. JJ Reddick? Yeah. Did he go to Duke or North Carolina? He went to Duke. Oh. So, um, okay. So, Haribo Snickers. Um, I'm going to take, I'm taking sweet tarts. Sweet tarts. You are a sweet candy guy, aren't you? I am. I, I do love, I do love sweet candy. Uh, I'm at number seven. I'm going to roll it back. I'm trying to do the mainstream, just the mainstream ones, but um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to take airheads. I like airheads. What's your favorite airhead? My favorite airhead is either the cherry or the watermelon. Is the mystery airhead just what they have left over and they just maybe I, is the mystery is the mystery one different every time? I don't know. I feel like it's just whatever they have left over at the end of the lines and they just mix it all together. It's possible. I mean, I can see that. I don't know. They're just like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> right. All right. So your last two picks are eight and nine. So I don't have a brand because I don't care. I'll just buy whatever. I'm not the gummy snob that my co-host is. Uh, I love gummy worms. Oh, dude, I almost picked those. I was hoping you wouldn't. I was trying to think. I was like, this might be the one that I actually like. Cause like, oh fuck, he took it. But <laughs> I love gummy worms. <laughs> okay, that's legit. And I, I'm sure I'm forgetting something that I'm like, God dang it, sure. I could have drafted that. Candy. I, I most of me wants to say Milky Way, but I feel like that's too similar to they by, by the way, I had my first Milky Way tonight. They're really good. They're garbage, bro. Really? They are so are you not a caramel guy? Not I like I so I said this to my wife. This is part of the reason why I was confused. So Milky Way is caramel and nougat, right? Who knows at this point? <laughs> I don't fucking know. My mind's broken. I think it's caramel and nougat and then chocolate. Sounds about right. But if it has caramel, I'm pretty much in. So I'm like, listen, I think 
50 times out of 50, I'm taking a Snickers bar over a Milky Way. Well, it's a Milky a Snickers is a Milky Way with peanuts, Nuts. right? Yeah. It's got, got it's better. I, I think they're pretty interchangeable for me. They're 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 the equivalent of Mounds and Almond Joy. I don't need one, either one. One has a nut. Dude, I love I love Mounds. I will not eat an Almond Joy. I'm not I don't like the the nuts too have like big. But the coconut is not bad. I oh, I love uh, Mounds. I also, think, I also think one of them is dark chocolate and one of them is milk chocolate. Might be. I love the smell of coconut. I love the taste of coconut, but I won't eat coconut because I feel like I'm eating paper. Fair enough. I could see that. And like, I didn't eat nuts for the longest time. I'd eat peanuts, cashews, and pistachios, but then I wouldn't eat almonds or walnuts or anything. So a lot of these candy bars I don't like. I I used to, and I'll eat stuff with nuts in it now, but a lot of the nuts that really don't taste like anything, I feel like they're just wasted space. They're just taking up space in these where you could have a better material in there, like chocolate or caramel or whatever. Why are you putting a fucking nut in there to take up space of something that could be better? That's true. Like peanut butter. Yeah. Peanut butter Snickers. Have you had those? Those are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Peanut butter Snickers are pretty good. Um, I was trying to think of something else that they came out with recently. That was really good. Um, fuck, I had something that was like super good. I went on like a run. I was like, I'm going to eat a bunch of these. Fuck. What are they? Um, well, you think I'll make my last pick. Okay. I really like M and M's. Give me M and M's. Just Damn, plain old M and M's. I like the different varieties, but I'm just gonna go stock. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I don't mind it. I have like almost no chocolate. Uh, chocolate. So I'm like, there's there is a chocolate bar that I think we both missed that is legit that I could pick, but I there's also a sweet candy that I might go with. So, do I want to go sweet or do I want to go chocolate? I'm going to go Kit Kat. I almost chose Kit Kat. And then at the last minute, it's just like me ordering when we're out to dinner. I'll be like, have in my mind what I'm ordering, and then I'll order something totally different by the time the waiter gets there. All right. We can run. So, we'll run it back. So, Gems has on his team Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Butterfinger, old, preferably 2017 vintage or before. <laughs> three mu- three musketeers, gummy worms of any f- type, M and M's, and I have Haribo gummy bears, uh, golden bears is what they're actually called, um, and then Snickers, sweet tarts, Airheads, and Kit Kat. I think I, all, I must win uh, Trolley's uh, bright crawlers though. I do like. I really enjoy sour gummy worms too but i want yeah i forgot i forgot to pick fucking uh sour patch kids too i was gonna go sour patch kids they, we have the factory up here right down the road that makes oh really sour patch kids uh what's the ones the watermelons well they do like this silly rope too or whatever like oh, the six foot long yeah. rope yeah 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 by the way you know it's really good trolleys makes a they're it's like draws they're like they're like uh, yay long. They're like maybe like two inches long, and then they have like a. It's almost like this gum gum texture, like laffy taffy inside. By the way, laffy taffy legit too. I don't know why I didn't go laffy taffy, but <laughs> nerds, dude, nerds, nerds. I don't like the nerds. I like the giant ones. They make new giant ones, and they make a sour one. They're like giant sour nerds. Really? Do you like and a nerd rope? They're chewy. Nerd ropes are okay, but they're kind of weird. It's because it's like kitty. They look. They remind me of kitty litter. Yeah, it's like clumps. There's- Shit, kitty shit. Yeah, but. Exactly. But that was a that was a solid uh, impromptu to candy draft. Um, so favorite favorite foods. That's what we did. We just went candy, and then we went off track. Um, <laughs> that's cool. That's what this this podcast is all about. Going off. Wait, the we were a little worried. Well, I don't even say worried, but we're like, what are we going to talk about tonight? We'll figure so, it out. Sometimes I, I just a little behind the scenes. If anybody wants to know, uh, me and Jim's talked for like forty five minutes beforehand about nothing to do with this podcast really uh, a little bit to do with this podcast but nothing to do with this actual like episode of this podcast and then we uh we're like man what are we gonna talk about and i was like i don't know and then gems was like screw it let's just go and then we just started and then we have 20 minutes already so well the last time we recorded or two times ago i guess technically we talked for like two hours after we were done yeah 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 which actually was very productive so 
Um, so yeah, so me and me and Jim's obviously uh, are the type of dudes that just like to um, just chit chat, and obviously we have a good rapport here, and we're making making things go. So uh, kind of keeping on the food trend here. Um, this will come out after Thanksgiving, but we're recording it before Thanksgiving. Um, what are you looking forward to most about Thanksgiving? I'm going to have good food to eat at work because I'm on midnight starting Wednesday night. So ah, I will... shit. Uh, uh, okay. Double time and a half is also nice, though. But Oh, nice. And we get it for Thanksgiving and Black Friday. So it's a very good week. Oh, work damn. Nice. But just all the different kinds of foods. Like, especially if I know I'm going to start trying to eat better. Like, I'm going to eat like dog chip for like till probably like Monday. Legit. Why not? Right. Because there's no point of like, there's no point starting before Thanksgiving and there's, you can't start like the day after Thanksgiving. I got a couple days before. I might, I might start tapering the right. day after Thanksgiving. I like a good piece of ham. Like I almost would probably prefer ham over Turkey. For real? I, I eat both, but I, I don't know. Probably because I take a turkey sandwich to work all the time. Uh, that's probably but, makes sense. Yeah, you probably like fuck turkey. Yeah, ham. but I mean, I'll get a piece of each on my they plate. Make, you know they make ham, right? Yeah, they do. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You're just like on a, the same sandwich every day. You're just like, let's go. I did that with a peanut, a plain peanut butter sandwich for like two years just because I was lazy and didn't feel it's like my so- one time, one time when I was younger, I was like, dude, I'm going to do this diet. You know what? I'm going to make sure. I'm just going to prepack everything I eat. I'm going to buy all the groceries, and then I'm just going to prepack everything I eat so I don't even have to think about it. And I was like, I literally made, I took two loaves of bread and made like 30 fucking peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That was your like, healthy diet? No, 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 no. So this is my thought was, I'll have everything pre-made, so I want to think about it. So I go into the kitchen, and I'm like man, I'm hungry. I'll just grab something. But then I kind of like, it's already pre-made. So I kind of know what I ate during the day and then I won't overeat. But it was dumb as fuck because I literally just would eat like five fucking peanut butter. <laughs> 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 it was so stupid. Well, peanut butter jelly sandwiches are legit. Yeah, I love peanut butter. Dude. And jelly. Uh, have what you ever it- had a fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich? No, I don't think so. I used to eat fluffernutters quite a bit. It was peanut butter and marshmallow fluff. That's we just nice. actually bought some to give uh, let our daughter try. She's going. Oh, really? I don't think she's tried it yet, but she loves marshmallows. So. Well, we will have my wife makes this stuff that her sister gave her the recipe from, and it's called something really inappropriate. And I feel weird every time I eat it. But so, so my sister in law came up with this dip. This it's a fruit dip. It's got like cream cheese and that marshmallow fluff and I think maybe some vanilla extract and something else. I don't even know. I never watched it get made, but um, I know those three things are in it and then some other stuff. And then um, so my sister-in-law came up with it or like somebody gave her the thing while she was like at college and then she passed it along to my wife and uh, the name for it is called Juicy Splooge. <laughs> <laughs> so like that's so we i mean we don't call it that we just call it fruit dip but like every time it's like is that know? what you're looking forward to most for thanksgiving no 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 food? no but i was thinking of it because you said you said uh the, the marshmallow fluff oh the marshmallow, yeah the marshmallow fluff's good but no i think uh what i'm looking forward to most is watching the lions get their ass handed to them by the fucking houston texans probably i don't but. know it's probably just gonna be such an awful game like probably if Stafford's thumb was working correctly, I would be and Galladay was playing. I'd be pretty confident in what was going to happen, but it's one of my favorite DFS slates though, is the three game Thanksgiving day. Yeah. Cause I like those smaller slates, but like you don't get them a lot with football. So you have to almost play the single game or like, and I'm like, but like the, how the Thanksgiving, it's always interesting. I think it won like, 200 bucks last Thanksgiving. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I had, I had David Blau and he did okay. Last, I think that was last Thanksgiving. I feel like we might have been sharing lineups at that point, too. I thought I... Probably. Sounds right. I remember some Blau lineups in there for that. Yeah. But, 
is but like yeah i i don't know I, I, food wise i probably most uh mashed I'm, I'm pretty simple mashed potatoes and jerky probably yeah i we go to my wife's grandparents house and maybe we'll pop by my grandma's house too because they're two blocks away from each other nice but like her uncle is like a wannabe chef i guess not that he ever would do that but like he just likes to cook Oh, okay. So he always like smokes a turkey and they like have a smoked turkey, a fried turkey, which are fantastic. Yeah. They have all sorts of shit too. Like there's corn <laughs> casserole, there's regular corn, there's yeah, mashed potatoes, there's some sort of funky mashed potato, there's fourteen pies. <laughs> fourteen pies. I don't know. There's a handful of pies. Like I mean it's there's always, like it's always weird when there's a ton of pie like out during the because it's always out on the counter. Right, I'll probably end up getting COVID there. I'm assuming because there's like tw- <laughs> there's like twenty some people that are probably be there. I don't know. Wear a mask and chew underneath your mask. No, I'm just like you're like <laughs> right. Like and just, uh, just it but my what's your favorite pie? Uh, pumpkin pie is my favorite pie. Pumpkin pie. Growing up, pumpkin pie was my favorite, and then lots, I went lots to of whipped cream. Got to go lots lots of whipped cream. Though. My I say I don't put any whipped cream on mine. My grandma always made this banana meringue pie, hmm. and that is my all-time favorite. That sounds interesting. I'd try that. Like, like I think common is lemon meringue, but she did uh, a banana meringue. I, uh, key lime pie is like that, right? Like, there's like people. I think you can. When we were baking pies for, I don't want to say for a living, but like as our side hustle there, uh, our key lime pie was more like a pumpkin pie. It like looked like a pumpkin pie almost, yeah. except for. Key lime pie is a weird one. Uh, I was just talking about this with somebody else. Key lime pie is one of those flavors that like is either really, really good or dog shit. Yeah. Like, depending on who makes it, it's like either really good or really shitty. That makes sense. I didn't eat too much of it. It was one of the, like, I would shove a pie hole in my mouth if there was extra or it was broken. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, yeah. it wasn't one like I really craved for. Nah, it's not, it's definitely not like, well, that's a weird thing, right? When you get like those turnovers or whatever, like at like the, the store or whatever, and there's like apple and cherry and all that shit. Like there's like 70 flavors, but I'm like, who's picking past the first three? <laughs> right. Like, I'm going to see if I can find our old menu ish thing and send it to you. I think okay, it's on yeah. old Instagram. Yeah, I definitely want to see it. That's, that's so funny. They can, you guys, you can have uh, pies at our first like live event when we do a live. <laughs> Every time I suggest pies, making pies again, I get threatened with like divorce. Oh, that's not good. No, <laughs> she just uh, doesn't want to make them, especially with like children. But like, oh uh, yeah, you did so good running our Instagram and our tw- our Facebook for that. Yeah, like I'm, I just. Search the hashtag pie holes LP because Laporte is where we live. Okay. And there's a shit ton of posts. Like she was doing great things with this. I missed that part of it. Well, yeah. So, I mean, that, well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, I mean, maybe take that same initiative into something else. She, she, she's like, can I run you? She's like, do you need help advertising? I said, at some point, it'd probably be nice. <laughs> I said, yeah. like, we do find like, but she loves this kind of thing. Where the Dude, hell? I'm down. Can you see these pictures? Yeah, yeah, I can. Dude, those are really, those look good. Yeah, that was for Valentine's Day, I think. Dude, those look bomb, dude. I'd eat those right now. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, we made them in cupcake tins. Our probably people's favorite was like the salted caramel chocolate. Oh, shit. My wife would love that. She loves salted caramel. The, these flavors in this are peach and blueberry, but then there's chocolate cherry, coconut cream, coffee toffee crunch, which was coffee and toffee, and then salted caramel chocolate. Yeah, man, dude, so, I could I could go for a coffee right now, and it's bad late. But I, I was drinking a yeah, I was drinking coffee during the chainsaw interview, but uh, I probably shouldn't now, but it sounds so good. Right mm-hmm. in front of right in front of me, I literally have like a drink of coffee left, and then I have a little sip of oh you got a lion's dog uh, is that your coffee that was my That's coffee you drank it earlier so i have a, i have a cup with like a little sip of coffee left in it i have a cup with 
uh, whiskey in it, and then I have like uh, Sprite that I just finished. So. <laughs> I got a Diet Pepsi, two waters. I got two <laughs> Diet Pepsi, empty Diet Pepsi bottles here, two waters, and then my coffee cup. But like last week when we did our podcast, I I had two. I poured two cups of coffee. Like and I drank through both of them pretty fast, but we I love I love coffee, dude. So do I. We used to. I was like, who would ever buy decaf coffee? And then I realized I just like coffee. So like we would, like if it was like late at night, like after dinner, and we're like, decaf coffee. Yeah, perfect, dude. Uh, off the rail should have their own coffee. We should get our own coffee. I like it. I wish, <laughs> we're already planning stuff. So. Um, so, uh, uh, what's your favorite, like, do you like it? Do you do any of the, since it's that season, do you do any of the, like, co- uh, coffee creamers and shit? I, I, most of the time I drink my coffee black. Dude, I do too. Um, uh, every so often, like going to Starbucks, I'll get like a flavor of some sort, but yeah. 90, but at home it's just black coffee. <laughs> no, no. So yeah. So it's, dude, it's, it's hilarious though. Like, um. Co- like the coffee creamers like is becoming like this massive thing like every time i go to like the store because my kids have started to drink coffee but they don't really drink coffee they just drink creamer <laughs> oh, they, very cool there is. they put so much creamer and sugar in it and i'm like dude what are you doing it's not even coffee and um but there's like three windows at the freaking store of just coffee creamers yeah there's so many coffee creamers nowadays yeah, it's wild. Like, I uh, she'll send me to the store to get coffee creamer for her, and I have no idea what I'm looking for most of the time. <laughs> she wanted this. She's like, I want this organic one or something. And I was like, well, I can't find it. I said, they have this Apple brand. And she's like, is it Ripple? I was like, yeah, <laughs> Ripple. I'm stupid. Ripple and Apple, same thing. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, no, there's so much of it, though. There's like. And now Starbucks is finally making like they make a pumpkin spice latte uh, creamer. I'm like, man, you guys are just like probably making a killing with that shit. Oh, yeah. I worked at a coffee shop throughout high school for a little bit. Well, okay. throughout high, I shouldn't say throughout high school for a little bit. Probably a year or two I spent there. So I can make all the drinks and I drink a shit ton of coffee. But like that was something I didn't lose like interest in, you know, after eating a bunch or drinking a bunch of something. You're like, I don't want to I don't want any of that. I did, um, I think it was two Decembers ago, I did, um, uh, I drank no coffee for the entire month. Wow. Just because I was like, I was like, you know what? I was like, do I even like coffee? And I was like, let's see. Because if I can not drink it, I'm a firm believer in anything you do. If you do it for 18 days straight, you're, you automatically, like, it's like, becomes a habit. Yeah, that so makes I'm sense. Like, so I'm like, if you don't do anything for the same amount of time, you break a habit. And so I'm like, you know, well, fuck it. I was like, if I don't drink coffee and then I have coffee when I come back and I like it, then I probably like coffee. And so, right. yeah. So I went the entire month without coffee. I drank a couple of couple of cups of tea and then uh, but then I had coffee when I came and I was like, nope, I, I just like coffee. So I need to do that with like running or something. Run for 18 straight days. Well, I mean, we both need to lose weight. So, <laughs> right. Like that's going to be the way I need to do it. I always set these like really weird goals and I'm like, man, I was like, somebody said something. What was it? Uh, someone was like, I want to run. Was it fucking 200, 200 miles in a year or something like that? And I was like, that's actually really doable. 200 miles in a year. Yeah. 365 days in a year like that. That's what I'm saying. I was like, but I was like, at first I was like, man, I was like, yeah, if you just ran like half a mile a day, you would, you could basically be at 200. I say I say that, that that's super doable, 200 miles in a year. But this 2020, I'm sure I ran a mile. I I don't know, like not trying for fitness. Like so, all of that running. Like I don't know if I I know. I think it was at the end of last year I started running a little bit. Yeah, less than like two weeks, if that. Yeah. But I wonder how much I actually like ran. Like got my heart rate going and like would you'd consider a run it would be running bases and softball would be about it i think yeah which i'm playing a softball tournament not this weekend but the following weekend so nice. yeah i haven't i mean huh that'll be that'll be some running 
Yeah, and like I haven't played since September, so it's not too far. But like I'm way out of shape. Like I don't know. I mean, yeah. it'll be super laid back. It's a benefit for my buddy that had just passed away. But yeah, I'm just like fuck. It's gonna be like 35 degrees and oh shit, yeah. Those your hands those are used insane. to be super fun because we just drink like hot chocolate and peppermint schnapps. Ugh. Peppermint <laughs> schnapps, I can't do. Oh. We'd make we'd get like a five gallon, you know, like one of those water coolers and just yeah. fill it with that and just drink on that all day man you have pepper and snobs takes me back to this time i don't think i guess i should ask you this question this would be a good question if you've ever been drunk twice in a day i mean if you consider like drunk full I, over and then drunk again I, no i i would say by your definition no because i'm sure i've gone to bed at three or four o'clock in the morning drunk woke up I, I would consider that a new day, though. I don't consider that being drunk twice in the same day. That's fair. So, this peppermint snaps reminds me. I did. The, I broke my wrist, um, and then I went over me to too. a buddy. Buddy, I went over to a buddy's house, and I was like, "Hey, oh, we were doing a barbecue. That's what we were, it, this dude had like the nicest neighbors ever, and like the entire cul-de-sac would do like this block party every year. They would like somebody would smoke a pig. It was like someone would make ribs." But we start super early and we all worked in the wine business. So we would start super early in the morning. And when we started super early in the morning, we'd get done. We got done by like eight. If because like what would happen was like, well, most of the time we like if we start early, no one would come help you. So you'd be done like 10 o'clock. But like on a day like that where everyone was gonna go party, we would all start early and then whoever finished would go help the next person, and then those two people would help the third person, and then we just all get done with their shit right way past. So we'd be done by like eight. So we Eight o'clock, we went from work straight over to this dude's house. And then <laughs> we were talking shit, and I had a broken wrist. And I was like, and it was my left hand. So, and uh, so I was like, well, fuck, like we're talking all this kind of shit. And so we're like, okay, we'll play horse. But for every every letter you get at the end that you're down, you that person has to take that many shots. Right. So, fucking the, the rim's like seven foot. It's not even a normal height. Like, I have to shoot right-handed. Fucking, I missed the first shot. And this dude makes like five shots in a row that are like pretty routine, but I have to make them with like my right hand. Right. So I made like made a couple of them. I was down. Like I ended up getting skunked. So I had to take five shots and it was like fucking snops. And like, I fucking just was like, pour them in a cup and I'll do them all at once. And I was like, fuck it. Get it so over. I, so I just slammed it. And I was like, I didn't eat shit at all. I hadn't eaten anything all day. We've been up since like two in the morning. So like maybe 15 minutes later, I'm like, I'm fucked up. Like, I'm like, oh shit, this isn't good. And then I was like, I'm going to go lay down on your couch. So he was like, okay. So I went and laid down on the couch. I was, I was drunk. Like, I mean, I was wasted. I barely made it to this couch. I slept for like two hours, woke up completely feeling fine somehow. And then got proceeded to get hammered drunk that, that day. I was like, man, I was like, I was drunk twice in one day. Right. It's like, Chasing the hair of the dog or whatever. It all was the same fucking day. wild, dude. And I didn't throw up once, which was the nuts part. It's impressive. Yeah. That was with our chainsaw interview. I knew he went to UNLV, and that was one thing I wanted to ask him if he had yeah. any crazy Vegas stories. Well, I think on the other podcast that I listened to, he said that he it didn't really suit him being yeah, there. That's what I figured. So, he probably had something good. Yeah. Yeah, whether he wouldn't talk about it or not, but uh, I'm sure he would have been fine. He seemed like a really open dude. I bet you we, I bet you we have him back on at some point. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to? Have you been to Vegas? Um, uh, I've flown t- through Vegas. I've never actually really done Vegas proper. I haven't. I would say I haven't done it proper. I've spent like 12 to 14 hours in Las Vegas. My yeah. buddy, my buddy was stationed in San Diego, so okay. me and my other buddy, two buddies, were going to visit him. And we're like, well, fuck it. Let's just fly to Vegas, spend the night in Vegas, and then head to San Diego. Oh, damn. So we flew into Vegas, and <laughs> we get there at like midnight, 1230 oh, in the morning. <laughs> so everything's open. It's all everything's good. open. Like, that was not a concern at all. Our <laughs> buddy was meeting us like the next afternoon to come pick us up and take us to San Diego. So like before we left the airport in Chicago, I was like, I wanted to take it with, but... I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get this on the airplane. So I, it was just an Adderall. I took the Adderall before I got on the plane. 
but it was it was a time released one, so it kind of planned out perfect because it's like a three or four hour flight. And yeah, so I was like fidgety on the plane a little bit and drink like one beer, but like I was feeling pretty good by the time we got to Vegas. <laughs> nice. So we kind of just spent. We ate as soon as we got there, and then went wandering around town, just drinking. They like give these like yardstick things. It's like a big. Oh yeah, I've had those. It's like a foot long, well three feet long, drink. So we're like, give us Long Islands. So <laughs> we're drinking Long Islands out of them. I think they were like super stupid expensive. It was like eighteen bucks a pop or something, but they make them strong. Is this your first time in Vegas? Yes. Okay, and then they get just fucked up. <laughs> So it was me, my buddy, who I just went and saw in Atlanta, and our other friend. And our other friend had hit it hard the night before at home. So he was oh, shit. It, he was already feeling it. He went to bed fairly early, and me and my other buddy went and wandered around Vegas more. And it's like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and we run into these Irish girls. <laughs> as far as I know, this is what happened, but like I could... we. Me and him could have both imagined this. This is like <laughs> we hit it hard those first few hours in Vegas. So we were like talking to him for a little bit, and they told us their room number, and they maybe they told us the wrong room number. So we're like, all right, we're gonna finish our drink and we're gonna go up there. And they're like, all right. So we finish our drink and we get on the elevator, and neither of us can remember exactly what number it was. So we're like, fuck it. So we both had a number in our heads. So we went and knocked on these two separate doors. Neither of them was right. <laughs> <laughs> at like th at this point, it's like six six thirty in the morning. So oh, like shit. normal people are either asleep or <laughs> being get ready to wake up for a shitty day. Right. It's <laughs> so we're just in our hotel and then we knock on the door and they n nobody answered either of them. But I'm sure oh, they were in. There. Yeah, but. So I was like, man, I got to pee. And I don't remember what floor we were on. Oh, shit. So we're waiting for this elevator. I was like, I got to go. So there's like a window at the end of the hallway. And there's a curtain over it. So I was like, fuck it. I just went behind the curtain and pissed on this window <laughs> in the middle of the hotel. But I mean, we're, we're on like the 30th floor. We're way up there. But I'm like pretty close to blackout drunk at this point. <laughs> So I'm peeing on this window and I hear people getting off the elevator and it's uh, this couple and they're like, is he pissing? Damn. And, but he's like, no, 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 he's not. So then I like hurry up and pinched it off and got on the elevator and like went to a different floor first and then went back down to our floor. <laughs> uh... that, was, that was my Vegas story. Dude. And well, that I mean, oh, and that was all on video. My buddy videoed me peeing behind that. Oh shit! Like, so somewhere gonna, he had it on. Meet, it was like that phones video. ago. Gonna need that video sometime. If he's got it, I'll see if I can get it to you. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Um, fucking dude. Yeah, the things we do, like at certain points, like you're like, man, I don't know how I made it alive. Like, I, yeah, like, my twenty to or nineteen to twenty two, probably like I yeah. some dumb stuff. Like, for sure, probably, like, I would say probably about, probably, like, 17 to probably about 22, because I had my first daughter at 24, and I was pretty, pretty, like, normal human being by that point, at 22, so, like, I think, yeah, so probably, like, 17 to 22, I did some, I went real hard. Like, yeah, that was... I was probably, I guess, 18 to 22 after I graduated high school. In high school, I was pretty tame for the most part. But college, I was like, hmm, well, I was 17 because like my parents kicked me out at one point because they didn't like the girl I was dating. And like I was being a dick. <laughs> I was like, just a dick teenage kid. Yeah, I've since, I've since apologized to my to my parents. But uh, I'm stubborn as shit. Like I'm like, I'm the kid. I was the kid who like at 14, my mom was like, we're seven miles from home. And my mom's like. If you don't like it, you can get out of the fucking car then. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I just started walking home. And then she was like, she'll like pull up and ask me, she's like, get in the fucking car. And I was like, I'm not getting in the car. You told me to get the fuck out and walk home. <laughs> and I walked all the way home. I was that kid. Um, so so my mom, my mom, we got in this fight at like two o'clock in the morning. I think I came home. I either I came home late or or I was want, or I was trying to leave. One of the two. I was either trying to come home or I left. 
And my mom was like, you're 17 and you're disrespecting me and your dad and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I probably, I mean, I was like in retrospect. Um, and my mom was like, fuck it. She's like, you don't like my rules. You can get the fuck out. I said, okay. I said, fuck it. Uh, so I was homeless for like four days. So you like, at was, a friend's house or? Nope. I just went straight homeless. I slept on the streets. Uh, so like I slept on the streets. I had, I had some money with me. Um, because I was like, I had like, like little like odd jobs that I had. So I had like, I had probably like 200 bucks or whatever. Um, so I like, I could get food and stuff and all that jazz. Um, and then, um, and then like the fourth day I went to hang, hang out with my girlfriend cause they were out of town. Um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, so like I went over to hang out with her and she was like, uh, she's like, do you need a, do you, do you need a ride home? Like, cause I didn't have a car. Like, cause I was like, my parents, like I just used my parents' third car because my mom had a car, my dad had a car, and then they had like a third beater car. Yeah, and I was like, uh, I uh, no, I don't need to ride home because uh, yeah, my mom kicked me out. She was like, what? She was like, and then they love her parents loved me so much that like, or I guess her her mom at this point because her mom and dad had divorced, but like her mom loved me so much that like she was like, we well, can just stay here, and I was like, okay. <laughs> She's like, only rule is you can't you can't obviously sleep in the same room as your as your girlfriend. I was like, right. Well, it makes sense. I'm 17. So right. I slept slept on the couch one night, slept on the couch the second night, and then the third night, it was like a weekend, and then I don't know. I think her mom was drunk or something like that, but like her mom was just like, I don't care. You guys go sleep in the same room. She's like, I'm not stupid. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, whatever. So then that I stayed there for like two weeks, and then I finally moved back in with my parents. But yeah, so I was that kid though. I, I had a little little wild streak. Yeah, it sounds more wild than mine. No, I mean, it was just being yeah, wild and drinking. <laughs> no, yeah. So, so I, but I'm like, I, I think about it. I'm like, dude, I was like homeless for four days. I literally slept on the slept on the streets for like three days. Yeah. Did you sleep like, on like a bench or like would you sleep under a bridge? So is, is the beach? One night I slept at the beach. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's not too bad then. No, no. One night I slept at the beach. One night I, because I just walk around during the day because I had nothing to do. So I walked yeah. from, I walked from one city to another city. And that city is pretty rough. And I yeah. slept on the streets there. And uh, yeah, I was the only time I was kind of nervous. I started, I slept like on a bench to start with, but then like it was down by like a bunch of bars. And like, so people were like, come by and they'd like say random shit and i was like man that's kind of sketchy i don't know something could definitely happen so mm -hmm. then i like kind of like rolled up behind like this church yeah like i guess not behind the church it was in front of a church but they had like bushes and like a they actually the church had a covered like not patio but it was like it was almost like if you had a deck like a covered yeah. deck in the front and then they had like bushes in front so i slept between the bushes and the deck so and I slept there for like two nights, basically. Did you choose kind of the sketchy neighborhood? Because you're like, well, they my parents fucking kicked me out. If something happens to me, they're gonna feel real bad. No, no, I was just stupid. <laughs> I just, I was just dumb. I was like, ah, fuck it. I was like, I'll walk, I'll walk. And so, like, Virginia Beach is not bad, but then as you like kind of get into like Norfolk and stuff, like the beach areas is, is it's it's a little bit more rough. It's not really the beach; it's like the harbor. My dad has a really cool story about that place uh, not really a cool story it's a terrible story actually but uh because he was military when he first moved and they first moved there my dad's first station and last station were the same place okay so um so my dad got jumped by like uh, like four marines and like then like he like woke up they like robbed him they jumped him uh robbed him uh he was in the navy and uh he like woke up in like a like a like a basically a bed of trash bags. Like they threw him in like an alley. So he came to, he had a broken jaw, had a couple of broken ribs. Um, and he like went into this bar to call a buddy or the cops or whatever. And those dudes were in there. So they are in this bar that they, not very smart. They threw him in the alley behind the bar that like they were about to go into. Stupid right. Bar. So like they see him and they're like talking shit. He like call. He like calls his buddies and he's like, "Hey man, come pick me up." And they're like, "What's wrong?" And he was like, oh, "I just got jumped or whatever." Like fucking, he's like, I'm, "I think I broke something." And they were like, "Where you at?" And he told them, and he was like, "Okay." He's like, 
when we get there, I'll park across the street. When you see my car, you start talking shit to those dudes. And he was like, what? So like, he's like, yeah, he's like, I want them to follow you around the corner to the alley. So try to get into the alley. He's like, when you get to the alley, like right when you get to the corner, just duck. And, and he's like, my dad's like, I was just like, okay, what the fuck ever. So he's like, so I talk shit to these guys and they like, and they're like, well, let's take it to the alley. And they're like, we already jumped this dude once. We'll fuck him up again. Like, sure. So he's like, I hook the corner and he's like, I see the dude's shoulder that like there. And this guy apparently was huge. He was like a big, big dude. My dad's like five, eight. This dude's like, he said he was like six, five. <laughs> so like <laughs> my dad goes, I got to the corner and I just fall to the ground. Like, cause I'm like, I don't know where he wants me to duck, but he's like, I'm just going to get down as low as I can. So he's like, I go, I go to the ground. And he's like, next thing I heard was a baseball bat cracking a dude's forehead. <laughs> so <laughs> this dude just beat the shit out. So I guess they ended up fucking these, like hit this dude and like three other dudes that like rolled up with, to pick my dad up, like fucked these four dudes up and wow. like, uh, and then they made it back to the ship. And then I guess like the military police came and they were like, well, we're here to like do some stuff. Cause uh, he was in, he like jumped these dudes and they were, and I guess his like officer or whoever was ahead of him, like kind of in charge of him was like, do you see him? He's fucked up. Like, right. And so they're like, he didn't fuck anybody up, which technically he didn't. He, these other guys did, but <laughs> But yeah, he was like, man, he's like, it was a wild, was some wild shit, man. <laughs> yeah, wow. So and so that literally was like the shipyard area, and that's where I was sleeping. So. Oh yeah, it's probably sketchy sleeping around where a bunch of drunk military people are walking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So not very. Uh, it was it was near the neighborhood we moved to when I was like five, or I guess I was less than five because it was like when my dad was first stationed. So I was like mm-hmm. two or three, and the, uh, I do remember. That the first first day we moved into this house on this uh, street, uh, they found a dead body in the dumpster that we used. Jeez. So, so yeah, so I thought about like being not like wanting to be homeless, but like if that was something that ever happened to me, yeah, I would take whatever money I had and go. So I do not want to be homeless in Northern Indiana. Like I'm, no. I'm headed south. I'm like a bird. I'm going Dude. somewhere warm. I'm going somewhere warm and where there's access to, to shower outdoor showers. Any beach town seems like a genius location. Yeah. Tourists, that... tourists, you can get money from. Yeah. Outdoor showers. Mm-hmm. The beaches, I think you can legitimately sleep on without getting hassled too hard with by the cops because I think they're kind of public. That weird like. Yeah. Thing as long as you're not doing anything stupid and inappropriate, doing drugs or something. Right. Um, and it's warm. So yeah. that's that's sh- what I'm shooting for if I'm ever homeless. Is s- I'm going south, not going yeah. to like East East Beach. Or, I, mean, I could probably do West Beach, but huh. I'm going South Beach, not necessarily South Beach, but like I'm going <laughs> you're like Let's go. Right. Oh, wow. And I'm I'm thinking more like Texas. I don't know. All right, so on the so on this look on on this topic, we're not doing a homeless draft, are we? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it made me think though. So you're you're like I'm taking all the money I have and I'm going to the beach. Clearly, you're not getting a plane ticket because you're trying to conserve some cash. Have you ever taken a Greyhound bus? No, it's rough. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, like you can fly somewhere dirt cheap, so it might be a flash. That's true too. Yeah, you could you could probably fly somewhere dirt cheap. I dude, I saw a flight for twenty five bucks. My buddy's coming home from Georgia Atlanta next weekend <laughs> and for that softball tournament and yeah. round trip forty bucks. Damn, that's yeah. cheap as shit. Right, dude. Atlanta's Atlanta's like the hub though. That's the fucking place to fly out of. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I've been through that airport like a zillion times. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, forty bucks, you could probably yeah, you could probably just fly to your homeless destination. Yeah, hey, for sure. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't know. I, maybe I should do research so I just have that in my back pocket. I don't imagine that it would ever be the case where I wouldn't have to be worried about it, like a whole family of like no, a yeah. family. Uh, I don't understand how people do that. Like, I, you read stories about like people just dipping on their family and being like, "I'm gonna go start a new life." If I can somehow get across and go to Hawaii where it's eighty and sunny all the time, 
Give me that. But I need to have money for sunscreen. My pale ass has to have sunscreen. So, like I say, I want to go somewhere warm, but that's just for comfort when I sleep. Like, I can't do the sun all the time. I'm too fucking white. So, you'd have to have some shade. So, like, you'd have to have some trees area. So yeah. Makes sense. Do some guy in California. They have those places that have, like, shade, but also have the, the hot. Sleep under the boardwalk or whatever. Yeah, man. You sit, like, Santa Monica or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I've only really been to San Diego. San Diego's not bad. Escondido in San Diego. Escondido. That's San, San Diego's right by Tijuana, right? <laughs> yeah, we didn't realize that because I was, you <laughs> know, I was in that <laughs> Vegas San Diego trip. <laughs> 21, 22 years old. Tijuana was that close. Yeah. It would be good. I it's really good. I didn't know that. Yeah, because definitely I feel like that's a sketch. That's a sketch. Uh I hear terror stories of Tijuana. Like people are like, I went over there and they found out I they knew I was American and like they like shit like that. Like I'm like, dude, fuck that. Like, yeah, we for sure would have went to being yeah. down. Oh, and for sure. Yeah, and... I mean, you were peeing behind a fucking curtain. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> you're, you're down, you were definitely going to see all of them. That's not even a question. <laughs> yeah, like that would have been a so, place that needed to stay completely sober and not say anything <laughs> stupid to anybody. But oh, shit. we're in Tijuana. Yeah. And there's a comedian who tells who told the story. I think it might have been on Brant's podcast about uh, going to Mexico and like getting kind of outside of like the touristy areas and um, like the the is it the Federale? Is that who it is? Is that the I, cops? Yeah, I think that was Federale. The Federale was like rolled up on him, and he was just like, "I got sixty bucks in my pocket, and that's all I got. If you want it, to have it." And they were like. <laughs> Okay, and then they just left him alone. And, the, and he was like, I really had like 400, but like, I was just like, I was like, damn. I was like, well, that's how it works, I guess. That sounds like something Bert would do, but I don't think that. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Bert, it was somebody else. I feel like it's pretty wrong. Oh, dude, I, I think it might have been Bert's opener, though. There's a dude um, who opens for Bert that uh, Brant is friends with. Uh, Fuck, he does like uh he like barbecues meat and stuff. I think David Dave Williamson. He's the dude that Pat was talking about coming to the office when Bert came to the office. That was talking oh, really? about he said something about getting the try to get the guy at the car dealership who has like the who's new because like they'll just let him get a car a free car sale basically, so they'll like lose money on it. That was him that did that? I think that was who suggested that to them. Oh. Yeah. So but yeah, man, fuck yeah, dude. I mean, I think we both uh, have some very interesting stories. This was... Yeah. And more and more. Dude, that's the thing about life, man. I think life is, you have, I think, I think this will be a good spot to end. So as a parent, because like th knowing how you, you lived your life and you have kids, where do you fall? How do you figure you're going to take the fact that you know your kids are going to do some fucked up ass shit that is definitely not safe, but they kind of have to, to have the stories. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like my I wife, struggle was, with it. I struggle Taylor, with it. my wife was pretty tame for the most yeah. part. Like she wandered around drunk on campus and stuff, which is sketchy <laughs> as a girl. Like yeah, dude, uh, that's sketchier than you being behind a fucking curtain. Probably. Yeah. Dude. And like walking, me even walking through the hood, like drunk, yeah. walking to my buddy's truck that got towed, like in yeah. DeKalb, Illinois. But yeah, that's the scary part. Is like, I don't know. I I have no idea. Like, I I worry so much. I'm like, fuck, man. Like the first time they're gonna go out on dates or whatever, you're like, yeah, you can't do nothing for you. Right. I'm and I'm not the guy that's like, oh, I'm gonna be sitting there cleaning my gun. No. <laughs> Like I I joke about it all the time, but I'm like, man, I'm fuck that shit. I'm gonna be like, hey, right. hey bud, you want a beer? You're like, no, I'm just good. Like, right. It's just gotta kind of be like the you have to be able to trust your kids, I guess, and like just instill in them like the correct decisions that you hope they make. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. It's so so sketchy. I mean, I hear everybody's stories, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! If that was my kid, I'd be like, fuck. Actually, right. I hear my own stories, and I'm like, what the fuck. Right, and I'm like, and I'm the good one. Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, for the most part, I mean, dude, but like, you hear like, 
like our anomalies buddies like the, some of their drinking stories and you're like holy shit like anything could have gone bad in any of these numbers like did you have you ever heard tanner's story about how he like got a lawn dart in his ball sack <laughs> no yeah or something like that there's like the, you have to have him tell the story i think he might have told it on one of the podcasts he might even be able to tell you what podcast you can go listen to it but i think it might have been a podcast i was on to be honest with you um <laughs> I think it might have been the one I was on with um, Brian and Brian's wife as the guest. No, okay. Um, very funny, though. I think it was this local shit show. Um, so if you haven't checked out the anomalies, go check out the anomalies as well. They're our buddies. Um, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I might a do, lawn I might... dart in the scrotum. It, so I, maybe it's not. Maybe they're not called lawn darts. It's that game where you fucking your beer is by your feet or something like that, and you oh, throw beer darts dart. at it. Beer darts. That's we play I mean. that, that well, like we play that at, like softball tournaments and stuff, where you, you either sit or stand there, and you have a beer next to you, and they throw yeah. it, and you got to drink if it hits your can. You drink it till it stops pouring out because there's a hole in it. So if yeah. they hit the bottom, then you got to chug the whole beer. Chug the shit. So I guess somebody either missed. I can't remember the story, but I guess he. I think he got a dart in, in his nutsack. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, we we have kids, and they're gonna do shit like that, right? Yeah, like, I'd like to think my girls won't do as dumb of stuff as like I did. I think yeah, guys, would just, hope. I would hope, but guys just typically do dumber stuff. Like I'll tell Taylor some of the stuff I've done, and she's like, "What the fuck is this? Is why women live longer?" Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I think yeah. my wife was my wife is definitely more tame than I was. I think I yeah. definitely did stupid. More I'm just stupid like a good adventure, I guess, is all I could say. Like. I am a so I'm not really much of a drinker. So like it's funny because I was I was just drinking some whiskey, but like, um, but like technically I'm a social drinker. But like I am really only drinking for the podcast because like if I wasn't doing this podcast, I probably wouldn't have drank a thing of whiskey. But yeah, so it's technically still social. But like that's how I am. Like I don't. But then also like I, it's not, it's not even a peer pressure thing. So I will not do something stupid, stupid. Like I like I have lines that I wouldn't cross. But like. Like if it seems like a just a fun time, I'm probably in. <laughs> right, and like anymore, I am just a social drinker. I rarely will just drink while I'm sitting at home not doing anything. Like I think it's sort of weird. I don't like. I enjoy drinking. I enjoy certain drinks. Like I got whiskey yeah. today, and I I tried something new, um, and I was like, not bad. I like. I think I'm at that stage where like I'm just gonna go through a bunch of different whiskeys, and I'm just gonna try a bunch more stuff just to flavor profile, mm -hmm. but. I'm at that age where I'm like, I'm almost 40. I'm 37. I'm like, I got to have a go-to drink. Yeah. Because, again, by the time I'm 40, my kids will be about 15, 16, my daughters. And that I think I'm going to have to drink. Right. So, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I wouldn't have like a go-to hard alcohol drink. Like it used to be like Captain and Coke. But then like yeah. lately, because I feel like I'm tired anytime I get the opportunity to go out. I just drink Red Bull and vodka. But that's just, <laughs> I think I'm going to stay up later. Dude, Red Bull and vodka is a, is a trip, bro. Dude, I that shit will get me wired. Yeah, and then I, wired and drunk, and so like then I'm definitely doing something that I probably shouldn't do. I mean, the last what was it? The last time I hit it real hard, I uh, <laughs> threw up in my buddy's bed. <laughs> he put me in there, and he's like, "Yet," yeah. and it was me and my other buddy, both dads with one to two children so we don't get out much so like as yeah. soon as we got as soon as we got on our own that night it was just we took it to the house i guess you'd say <laughs> God, dude, i had to that just like a whole me. bottle of pink whitney <laughs> yeah dude i that reminds me of a uh, dude and then maybe i'll leave it on this story but like dude i had a uh, one of my best friends i haven't talked to her in a, in a while i definitely i probably gotta reach out to her and say what's up but um, her friends, her, my friend's name Al, is Allie and her parents are so cool. Like her dad was like a radio, um, like promotions guy. Mom was super nice, super awesome lady. Um, I actually met her through her dad cause her dad was our radio promotions guy for our sports store. Um, and, um, we actually went to the same school though. We just didn't realize it. Hmm. And, but I, but I had graduated and so she was still like in school. Like I think she was in her senior year or something like that. And so like, uh, so she was like. She came in one day and she was like, hey, she's like, my dad knows your guys because of that. And I was like, I know you because we go to school together or went to school together. And she was like, oh, okay. And she was like, she's like, uh, 
well, she's like, I have tickets to this concert that I was supposed to take a friend to, and they're not going. And I think you like music. My dad said you like music. So she's like, do you want to go? And I was like, yeah, sure. I thought I was getting asked out to be honest with you, but like, it was really just like, we became, we were like, became super good friends. And like, uh, we went to this concert and it was God awful. And, um, we were just became super tight. She was actually the flower girl on my first wedding. Um, uh, and, uh, but one night and we had been friends for, I don't know, years at this point. Um, we went over to her brother's girlfriend's house. Her mom was gone for the weekend. It was. And so we went over and it was like out in the fucking middle of the woods, like creepy. Like this is how horror movies start. Shit. Yeah. Like, and so like just in the middle of the woods, uh, it's me, her, her bro, both her brothers, his, his brother, her brother's girlfriend, this other dude, Dan, who was like a cousin of like the, uh, brother's girlfriend who like, they kind of knew each other, Allie and him and like something else. And then there was somebody else. We drank so much fucking liquor though. that like, I was like, I'm going to go to sleep over by this fucking foosball table. And like, I just lay on the floor and she was like, okay. She's like, just she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good for sure. Like 30 minutes later, like I'm throwing up, but like, it's that weird throw up. Where, like, this is the kind of shit where you're like, I was laying on my back and I was throwing up. So I was sort of choking on my own vomit, but I was also like way chill about it. Like I was just like, <laughs> I'm throwing up. And this is how I end. But I'm not like panicky. And I get she like saw she like saw me and she like rolled me over and like like rolled me sideways and then like I threw up everywhere. And then like she cleaned all of it up. Yeah. Cleaned up everything. And then like I became sober and I felt like an asshole. I felt I bought her I bought her so much shit after that. Like I was like I bought her like a bunch of band t shirts and shit. I was like, yeah, I feel like such an asshole. But so like always intrigues me about like the most random sh- fucking stories so like i almost died she saved my life she cleaned up all of my throw up and then like this is how dumb teenager kids are like or i guess not teenagers i guess i was like i guess i was like 21 she was i guess she was 21 i was 22 i don't know but this was like the last one of my last like re- go real hard moments and then so i threw up and then i was like sleeping on the couch sort of and then like i like was in and out and I woke up and then I was like trying to find her. And I was like, man, where the fuck is she at? Uh, Cause like the sun was kind of coming up and I was like, I was like, we got to probably get back home or whatever. I don't even know. And she was, it hadn't really drank. And I'm like looking around and like, I'm like, where the fuck? Cause I had never had this house. And like, I go upstairs doors wide open and she's just having sex with the dude. And I was just like, <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm going to walk away. So I walked away, <laughs> whatever. I saw her. I went back to sleep and then, I saw her a couple hours later, but I was like, <laughs> on the drive home, I was like, you had a wild night. And she was like, I had a wild night. I was like, yeah, fucking, you had a wild night. She's like, you had a wild night. She's like, you almost died. Like, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's part of your wild night because I, you saved my life, cleaned up all my throw up. And then you are still like, no, nah, but I'm still going to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, who does that? <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's like, the 20s, like, early 20s were a wild like that's that just sounds like something that probably i wouldn't have yeah. been surprised happened it was just wild it was like it was my last like that was my i think i got real drunk one more time after that but like it was kind of like my last like i was like man like i guess what probably like ptsd of like almost dying but like not really <laughs> being like to the point like but i it definitely was one of those things that stuck with me i was like i could have died like yeah um but yeah, like you're just like yeah, but that's just like that's how things go. Like that's a you're like oh yeah, that's not abnormal that you would that all that could happen in one night for somebody. Yeah, <laughs> like, I I feel like I'm just I like save up all my like drinking time for like <laughs> one night where I blow it all out, and it's not on purpose. It's just like it happens. No, it's like I have the okay to let loose, and then I just. And I probably, I'm sure it's, I overdo it. Like my sister-in-law's wedding, I was drinking with my wife's uncle all day. <laughs> and <laughs> by the, I don't remember like the majority of the wedding after, I don't remember a majority of that wedding. Yeah. Uh, and it was hot out and they put us in, it was, they got married in July. 
and we got we're full suits. I was pissed about that from the beginning. I was like, it's gonna be 95 degrees out, and we have to wear suit coats. So what the fuck wow. is wrong with you guys? I said we got married light, and we were in vests and a dress shirt or whatever. Yeah, I, they're just weird. Like, well, by the way, they're wool. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then I think the time after that was my buddy's 30th birthday, and that's when I threw up in his bed. But so. It's probably maybe once a year that it happens, if that. But it's got to be like, I don't ever do it with just being at home. It's like, oh, me and my buddies got together for the first time in a long time. And like, yeah. I can, there's times like we'll go out. I, I don't even drink like, and yeah. I could drink that night. But like, I'm like, no, I've been working a bunch lately. And like, I'd like to respond to some fire calls tonight if we got any, since I haven't made any in a couple of days. So, yeah. It's like, weird. Like, it's the I, I so I'm the same thing because of my job. I start or er, work early and I drive. I'm like I'm like I don't even want there to be anything potentially right. in my system. Since so I've, like yeah, so like that I, that's why I think what stops me from just casually like having a beer. Right. Like I used to before I got my job at the uh, the mill where I work. I. It was regular. I would go to work hungover. No big deal. I drank all night the night before and then go to work. But I, I don't think I've done it since I've been at my job that I've been at for the seven and a half years. I don't drink the night before more than a beer if I have anything. Yeah. But even now, it's like I can't drive a fire truck if I've had any alcohol. So I don't like yeah. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to be that to be the call where it's like something really cool or something like they need help for and I can't do it because I'm drinking. But like I really shouldn't think like that, I guess, because like everybody's allowed to do their own thing. And if this yeah. was 10, 15 years ago, it wouldn't matter because everybody would be drinking at the fire station, apparently. Dude, I remember I've had I had that moment like seven years ago when I first moved to Colorado. I sold cars. Right. I was like, I need a, I need a break. I because I was in the wine business for a long time, and I was like, fuck it. I was like, I need it. I need a change. Like, I need. To, I just need to do something different. And of course, I just did sales. It was the same fucking shit, basically. But it was just, it was a different type of sales. Right. And I remember one night, maybe like two, maybe like two or three weeks in, I had like made, sold like two cars. Um, we had just got the people out of there. It was like past. It was like a half hour past closing time. And uh, just somebody was just like, well, fuck it. Like, I got some beers on my desk. Let's just drink. And I was like, why the fuck do you have beers at your desk? Like, <laughs> so we just ended up drinking. We just sat in the fucking car dealership drinking beers yeah. for like two hours. And it was like, you're like. Those are like man. the best times too. Like, yeah, but yeah, it was, it's, just, it's just weird. You're like, man, you're like, hmm. You're like, this is like kind of how it was in the old days. But like, I guess like more innocent version. Nobody was doing anything fucked up but like right it's just like man like yeah you just crack some beers and, and shit like that but i don't know i'm not a big i'm not a huge drinker anymore i think i said i'm gonna think i think i'm gonna start picking up more whiskeys i enjoy whiskey and i think i'm just gonna try some more try some of that stuff so if anybody wants to sponsor us with whiskey sponsorship feel free yeah um, just, just so people know <laughs> if you sponsor us i will drink it like i will I, definitely drink it and i will promote the shit out of it yeah, so yeah, like, for real. if you want me to drink every day and you pay me to do it, I will do it. <laughs> me and me and uh, me and Jim's are not. Uh, we're not. Uh, you know, if you're going to pay the bills, I mean, right. We're, even we're even if it's something I don't care for, I, people will not know. <laughs> you're like, mm, this Mickey's is real good. I'll, I'll fuck with Mickey's. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know if I could actually drink it. I'd have to dump it out and fucking replace it with water. I, have you ever drank them? Have you drank a Mickey's recently? Not recently. I mean, I've done like Edward Forty Hands before, but that's <laughs> I've done Edward Forty Hands too. <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day that was like definitely a frat douche, like definitely a doofy frat guy. It was somebody I saw in one of my stores, and when I got into a fucking side conversation, I was like, and Edward Forty Hands came up, and I was like, I and I brought it up. I was like, oh yeah, I was like, I did Edward Forty Hands. He was like, what's Edward Forty Hands? I was like, not a chance in hell you haven't both done Edward Forty Hands. This is bullshit. I was like, "What? Did, I wonder what they called it when, in your fucking frat." But it definitely was every forty hands, <laughs> right? I was like, no one's had not heard of that. Unless these kids nowadays are soft. Which I mean, get off my lawn. No, right. yeah, yeah, no. I, I still imagine they got to be doing Edward, Edward forty Edward 
Edward Scissorhands is like an indie indie film. So even if they are soft, they could, they're still doing Edward. Everybody Gordon. at least knows who it is. Like what? It's a thing. Like, by the way, that's a weird ass movie. By the way, just so you I've know. never watched it actually. It's a weird movie. It's like a it's a very strange like movie, and then at the end it turns into like a Christmas movie. It's just all I all I imagine is it's Johnny Depp, right? Yeah, Johnny Depp. It wants to be a barber. That's that's what that's in my head. What like the, my theory behind it? But he's got scissors for hands. Yeah. So that, that would does he want to be a barber? Like, is he a barber? I th- he does end up cutting people's hair. That's just this seems to make sense. Like, what are you going to do with scissor hands? Why do you have scissor hands? I should watch it. I have questions. But he was he was grooming plants and stuff, and then I think he started doing hair. He turned into a hairstylist for I thought sure. You're gonna say heroin. He started right. doing heroin. No, he probably did. But um, Johnny Depp, not Edward Ford Hands. Um, uh, Edward Scissor Hands for sure. He, dude, you know, this just reminded me though when you said that, I never thought of that. But he plays a barber in Sweeney Todd. Okay, maybe that's where I'm getting the. But but he also is a barber in Edward Ford Edward Scissor Hands. He's typecast. Johnny Depp is typecasted. Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, man. He's like the dude just doing hair, man. That's all he wants to do is just do big hair guy. He's a kind of a big hair guy, though. Yeah. Every every movie he's got a different haircut. Yeah, I mean he's pretty wide range of what he does. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely like a method actor. Not a method actor. I guess maybe a method. No, he's seen like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Yes. That's wild. That's a tr- basically a true and, story, right? And that's a tr- that's a real person, oh, but like he real... killed it there. That was Johnny Depp, right? Yeah, yeah, that's Johnny Depp. Yep, he yeah, sure did. That's a, yeah, that's some wild stuff, man. Yeah, that was like one I couldn't shut off. Like I was like, I'll watch a little bit of this, and I was like, Oh, dude, what is going on here? Have so... you ever have you ever watched a movie that you weren't sure if you liked or didn't like, but you couldn't turn off, but also made you physically ill? Are you talking about the Human Centipede? Well, no, I haven't seen that one. I do know about the Human Centipede. I've watched all three. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the uh, I've seen the South Park episode where they like spoof it. <laughs> I, it just makes me laugh. It's just so ridiculous, and like I can't mention it around the the wife because she like makes her ill. Yeah, I do. Well, I mean, it for for rightfully so. I mean, rightfully so. No, um, uh, have you ever seen Requiem for a Dream? No, I've heard of it. I don't know much about no, it. Dude, there's some parts in that. I don't know if it's the way they cut the movie, but like there are parts of it that like make me ill. Like really? watching it. Yeah. Like, and I don't know why, but I'm just like, okay. But Jared Leto also, the reason I thought of is Jared Leto is like much like Johnny Depp. He's yeah. an underrated actor. I would agree. Also, did we, did we bring up 30 seconds to Mars on this podcast at one point? Well, I think that was off. <laughs> I was off. Off the rails. After we <laughs> got done with the last one, we were talking about off, off the rails. Okay, <laughs> but we have we have spoken about thirty seconds to Mars. Uh, well, I mean, speaking of being off off the rails, I think might we might be off off the rails now. And yeah. nice to know. That's a good. That was a good episode, man. I didn't know if we were gonna have anything to talk about, and we sure as shit did. Yeah, we nailed it. Always, always. Um, so if you're listening to this, this will be the second episode of the week. You'll probably get this. I don't know, Sunday, I'm going to guess. I'll probably have this up Sunday. Uh, so you got already listened to the Chainsaw Lennon one, hope, hopefully, because uh, it was a great episode. Uh, you're going to listen to this, and then you can probably expect the next episode. I'm going to start. I'm going to shoot for every episode coming out roughly Friday. I think that is going to be our date. And if we have any extra ones, we'll just fit them in where we can. So um, thanks for everybody for rocking with us. Uh, episode five already. Uh, I think we've already done now as many podcasts of this as we did of our old podcast, which means everything else from here on is just going to get better. Right. And I don't think that we, I don't plan a rebrand here. I think we've got this no. settled pretty good. I think we hit this one on the head. Right. <laughs> I think we were perfectly, I think I was a little worried about the rebrand to be honest with you. Um, but I think, uh, I think it works. I think it worked perfectly. It allows yeah. us to open up what we can do. And obviously, as you can tell, we have a lot we can talk about. Um, right. Especially, especially if you listen to all these episodes, uh, you're definitely like, man, they can go anywhere. Yeah. Well, especially since like we were doing a Lions podcast and talking like 15 minutes of Lions and be like, oh, did you know he went to this high school, which specialized in agriculture <laughs> or something stupid like that? That I mean, that didn't happen. But like, 
we uh and this is not even a brag because i i don't know if it's something to even brag about but we were wondering if we should switch our podcast genre that we fall into and we could not find a podcast genre that we actually fall into <laughs> yeah i mean what are we sports news right now we're a sports news podcast uh i think that does fit with what we will talk about the majority of the time because we will talk about sports probably every episode yeah, I mean, there's going to be sports talk. Like, no matter what time of year it is, something will come up. For sure. I think and we I, talked about softball. We talked about kicking. We've talked right. about, and in this episode alone, I think we talked about, oh, uh, we talked a little bit about football. Uh, we talked a little bit about baseball. And yeah, I think, I mean, so that was just random, through random conversation. So we, yeah. we're always going to be a sports that we just had no other genre we could fall into. So that's kind of like what you get with us is. Say the foundation is built on sports. The uh -huh. foundation of this is sports, specifically Lions and baseball. Yeah. If we yeah. were going to draw a picture of like the foundation of this thing. Yeah, for sure. At, at the very base, it's Lions baseball. Yep. And we're like, we're like that really, really cool uh, trailer park where there's that one really cool trailer. That's like five different trailers put together. That's kind of like our podcast. Yeah. My uh, great <laughs> aunt had a trailer in the trailer park that took up two lots. All the other ones were like north, south, and hers was uh -huh. east, west, and it took up two lots, and it was the nicest one in there. Okay. Dude, tell me if this is fucked up or not. I had this dream one time. So I like just fucked up shit. I wanted to, I want to build a house that, out of fucking uh, shipping containers because I think that'd be dope. What but the also, barn is that at my in laws? Oh, really? I mean, Damn. it's one shipping container. They're building a new barn here soon, but that's what they use as a shipping container as a nice, barn. Nice, nice, Yeah, you can do a lot with shipping containers, apparently. But I want to, I want to build this like really cool, funky one. But like, I'll sh I'll send you a picture later on of the one I I saw that I was like, I want to do that at some point. But I thought at one point I'd be like, how cool would it be if you got two trailers and you put them like an equal sign? Okay, and then, and then on top of those trailers, you got two other trailers that went the other way. So, like and a like, egg or a pound sign? No, 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 no. So they're just on top, though. So it's like a square, but they're like it's two levels of like equal signs, and then you'd have like a double decker trailer. Hey, a boy can dream. I mean, you dream can. house, and you'd have a nice courtyard in the middle. Yeah, yeah, nice little like you know little courtyard. Maybe that's what our podcast studio will be. We were talking about getting. <laughs> that would be cool. Talk, we could do a lot of a uh, cool like random shit there. Um, right. The middle is just like a field, like a little baseball or wiffle ball or softball field yeah. or something. Oh, dude, wiffle ball! I did not realize wiffle ball fields are smaller than normal. Yeah, I don't know why. I never thought of that. The ones I've, I've the fucking ones... seen them, but like I don't know why I never noticed that they were just like way smaller than normal fields yeah the ones in our league were right around 100 feet somewhere around there okay and that's a pretty good that's a good distance for a home run probably i've seen them wind dated 150 feet probably some bombs but like i, I just wild you think you think anyone's barry bonds juicing the fucking like just well, fuck it. I'm gonna hit this wiffle ball 200 feet. <laughs> you get those douchebag kids. I'm such an old man in there now, like in that area of people. But like, I was one of those douchebag kids. But like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, one of the best players to play in our league was this dorky cross country kid. I don't know how the fuck he did it. I mean, it's wild. Do Do you guys have a catcher? Yeah. Because, like, I was looking up YouTube videos and I was looking up wiffle ball for a potential future interview that we're going to do. And uh, uh, they have, like, a little, like, mat. So there's two different, like, there's fast pitch and slow pitch. We were slow pitch without okay. a strike zone. So it was bat till you hit. Okay. I always was a pitcher. I wanted a strike zone, but we just never incorporated it. We should have so, people that'll sit there and wait and wait and wait, but so slow pitch. Are you overhand? overhand. Are, yeah, it was, overhand? yeah. So you like BPing? Essentially, but like you can do stuff with it. I was, I'd always 
like you can throw, obviously you can still throw curveballs and knuckleballs and stuff. You just had to entice people to hit it. You'd get patient hitters who would sit there and wait. And then I would just get bored and just fucking throw it to them, hit it. There but go. <laughs> I mean, my main goal was to try to get them to hit the holes. So okay. like, you know, the wiffle balls got a full solid plastic side and then the whole side. Yeah. My goal was to try to angle it just right where like you could spin it and they would most likely their bat would make contact to that part because it was softer. But I don't know. Oh, there's that makes sense. Do it, but. Nice. How many? Pl- I mean, I'm definitely interested in this. I think we're definitely going to talk about some wiffle ball on some upcoming because I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty interested. I've never actually played an official wiffle ball game. So I don't know if we just made the rules up. But I mean, I would assume they're fairly like similar in other places. Yeah. Are am I wrong? Or are you a you're a wiffle ball hall of famer? Yeah. Like the, so. yeah, the town that uh, next door town that has the big tournament. I mean, that's pretty big. I mean, being a hall of fame in anything. I mean, whether it's, it's a made up hall, there's a medal somewhere. I just haven't gone and got it yet. <laughs> Who the fuck cares, gems? You are a fucking hall of famer at something. Think about that. <laughs> yeah. You've achieved something in your life. And that's a bit, I mean, that's a big thing around our area. So like, it was pretty cool. A wiffle ball hall of famer, man. By the way, they came out. This is what we're going to end it on for real, for real, for real. For real. <laughs> they came out with the semifinalist list for the hall of fame today. I think. Oh, did they? Calvin's on it. Obviously. Uh, Peyton, uh, Charles Woodson, Jared Allen, a couple other people. Do you think Calvin Johnson will be a first? Will be not if you think like he is, but do you think he will be a first ballot Hall of Famer? Stuff like that's tricky. Like it seems like the NFL doesn't have a ton of first ballots, do they? It's weird because I'm like Calvin Johnson and Charles Woodson are, or Peyton Manning and Charles Woodson are probably definitely first ballot Hall of Famers. Yeah, I mean Calvin should, but I mean I guess he didn't play that long. Yeah, that's the thing I was thinking too. Did you know that Glenn Milburn was on the like the veterans like as a possible? He was like the Lions return man in the nineties, and no. the Broncos return man, Glenn or Glenn Milburn. Uh, oh. He was on like the veterans voting of it or whatever. You know, I forget how they do it. You know, like the veterans committee in baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on that one, but he was like the return specialist in the late nineties, maybe. I didn't know. I did not. E L Y N Milburn. I remember him. I know, like, my favorite was, like, Mel Gray. Mel Gray was, like, the shit. I love that, was pretty, that was pre-me. Yeah. Yeah, Mel Gray was the shit. He must have been the guy met right after Mel Gray then. Yeah. I want to think it was, like, night Because he, like, bounced around the, like, the NFC Central. And he was, I think he got drafted by the Broncos, which obviously isn't the Central. But then he went to, like, the Lions, the Packers, and the Bears. Jesus was, like, fuck the Vikings. I guess, yeah. <laughs> That's wild. How many like touchdowns does he have? I don't know. I'm pulling it up right now. This is legit what we're ending up. We're gonna talk because this and this is our sports news. It, this te- this is technically sports news, right? So I guess he was on the Broncos from '93 to '95, Lions '96, '97, Packers '98, practice squad only, Bears '98 to 2001, and then the Chargers. He only had three return touchdowns. Punt return yards, 2,984. Kick return yards, 9788. So he must have had 10,000? Yeah, pretty much. He did that, have some receptions and stuff. Is that a lot, though? For He was on the Hall of Fame ballot list? That's what I, I accidentally found him on Twitter. I had forgot all about him, but I was looking for this fullback. Uh, no, it was a different one that was in that yeah. same era. And he had retweeted him. Mm. So. Huh. I don't, I, I like, I guess like for me, I'm like, I, I like the shocking part would be that he was on the hall of fame list, but. Cause right. Honored, honored to have made this list of modern era nominees for the class of 2021. But hmm. there's a hundred names on that. Uh, the list is comprised of 130 players. Who's the worst guy on that list? <sighs> this guy, this guy probably. Maybe. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I am just looking at the picture that has Calvin, Charles, and Peyton, and there's some names in the background. Like, there's guys that I would like. Is that the semifinalist from the uh, NFL Network? This is from like September, so this oh. is like it's got yeah, like if you 
took a breath in the end. Like Lance Briggs is a good player. He's on there. Willie McGinnis, Chris yeah, Spielman. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find somebody that like probably doesn't belong. I don't know. Some of these names they don't recognize. Bryant Young. Bryant Young was a offensive lineman for the 49ers, I believe. Okay. I could have just told like Mushin Muhammad is on here. Like Mushin Muhammad is okay wide receiver for the Bears, right? And Carolina, yeah. D- Dave Craig, Dave Craig was a quarterback. He was our quarterback, right? I knew who, oh, like, right. I knew who Mushin Muhammad and Dave. I was just saying, uh, like, I mean, yeah, were... I don't. Dave Craig has some ridiculous numbers, I think, though. Yeah, Jeff Garcia's on there. Jeff Garcia had a little hot run. He did, but I don't know about. Like oh, Heath, Heath Miller. Miller, he was a tight end, right? Yeah, but it wasn't like he was a Gronk tight end or like a Tony Gonzalez or Antonio Gates tight end. So Heath Miller has what? He probably has two two Super Bowls because he won two. Because what's his name has two, right? Uh, Roethlisberger has two, right? And it sounds about right. So he had so Heath Miller in his career had 592 receptions for almost 7,000 yards and 45 touchdowns. I guess that's not bad. Two-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl winner. It also has the best name in any sport on the list here. Yeah. The name that I always suggest to my wife anytime we get a new pet or a new kid. DeBrickashaw Ferguson. DeBrickashaw Ferguson. What's my favorite name? You can't That's... name your kid DeBrickashaw without them making the NFL. Like, I feel like... Surprisingly. Like, you name said... your kid something like that, like, they're going to make it. Yeah, his name is DeBrick. I mean, yeah. Or like, it seems like all these, there's like Major Applewhite. I mean, I don't think he ever made the NFL, but like he was the quarterback at Texas. But then there's like, there's other majors and shit like that. And yeah, for sure. Like, I'm convinced there's no other ones. It's just the ones that make it. By the way, DeBrickashaw Ferguson was definitely fucked when he was in kindergarten, dude. His name is DeBrickashaw Montgomery Ferguson. That is the longest fucking name for a child to learn how to spell. Dude. He got 30 letters in his entire name and a apostrophe. <laughs> oh, shit. Poor guy. Dude, that's crazy. But he, uh, DeBrickashaw, he, I believe it or not, I think him and, uh, dude, I think him and Heath Miller actually went to college together because they both went to the University of Virginia. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, I mean, University of Virginia put, putting out big, big things, man. Big, big, big numbers, man. That's crazy, though. Yeah, I can't, I don't, I don't know that DeBrickshaw Ferguson was a Hall of Famer, though. I don't. It's just, I think, like, they have a lot of good players on the list. Like, you feel like there's got to be definitely at least a couple people that were better than that, right? Yeah, I'm sure. But back to the original question, Calvin Johnson, I'm hopeful first by a ballot Hall of Famer. I think he's definitely a Hall of Famer. I think he definitely goes in at some point. It's just whether or not he'll be a first ballot. Yeah. Because I don't, but I, and I don't know if they'll, they'll keep count the fact that he didn't play long enough against him. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. One day when I have my Super Bowl or my Hall of Fame vote, then we'll see. But we, I mean, we are sports news media, so right, we'll get we'll get a vote at some point. Yeah, this could this conversation could go on because like I have thoughts about like baseball Hall of Fame and stuff like that. Oh, but we baseball, Hall a, baseball Hall of Fame is a fucking joke. Yeah, I don't know where you stand on that, but I guess that's probably for another episode. We'll have to mark that down and remember it. Mark that one down for sure. Um. So yeah. So I guess that's the end of uh podcast number five. Um, officially this time, so right. we go off the rails as you can see. Good talks, great convos, very entertaining. You hear, you learn about us, you learn about our thoughts on things, and about everything basically. So always tune back in, tell a friend, tell a friend, and um, subscribe, rate, yeah. and review. Yeah, and then uh, come back and uh, keep listening. Uh, we enjoy it. We enjoy talking. We're going to do it whether you listen or not. So you might as well listen. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. So episode number five is in the books. And episode six will be at you next week. Yep. Have a think. Oh, I guess this is coming out after. I was going to say have a happy Thanksgiving. But hopefully, hopefully you guys have a happy, Thanksgiving. happy Thanksgiving. Have a Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Have a Merry Christmas. Yeah. Later.
See ya. And we are done.